Today we're going to look at five tips on using user files and libraries for the Modix. Let's clear some things up right now. So let's just clear up something right now, right away, in that when you're talking about sounds for the Modix, you're dealing with user files or libraries. And when you go onto the Yamaha Music Soft website and you look at libraries, it'll talk about montage, 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 and won't mention Modix and some of the, the wording that's on the website. But what the, the files that you're going to be dealing with are user files and libraries. The file extensions are .x7u and x7l. U for user, L for library, and those files are compatible with Modix and Montage. So any of those files that might say they're for the Montage and with those file extensions will work and will be able to, to be loaded into your Modix. As you can see on this zip file that I have opened up here, it comes with an X7L and an X7U library and user file. And there's a difference. You can use one or the other. Here on the PDF, it explains very clearly that loading a user file will completely overwrite the current user data of your montage or Modix. And that includes user performances, user waveforms and samples, user arpeggios, utility settings, user live sets. So that's a lot of stuff that it will overwrite. It further goes on to say, if you haven't stored your user data yet, you should do so before loading this user file utility. And then underneath, when the library file is loaded, a new library is added. No existing user data is overwritten. The montage, or Modix, features eight libraries, one through eight. When loading the content type library, the next free library is used automatically. The sample memory of 1.8 gigabyte is shared by the user and library one to eight memory areas. And this is an interesting point here. They're specifically talking about the montage, which has 1.8 gigabytes. The Modi X has one gigabyte of shared space for user and library. And that's why you can't always fit all your libraries in at one time. And I'll go into that later. But this is an important point. I would suggest that you use the X7L file because it's a library file and it'll go in as a library file and not overwrite anything. All right, next we're going to head over to yamahamusicsoft.com forward slash synths. I'm going to show you where all the free libraries are. And I'll, these links are all going to be put in the description as well. So you can get the link from down there and just click on it. But you're going to go in and find that there's, at the moment, four free libraries, hundreds of sounds and performances. Uh, I would estimate it's probably $500 worth of software that they're giving away for free right now. So take advantage. It's very easy to do. You do have to sign up for a Yamaha Music Soft account, but that is free. Speaking of things that are free, please subscribe to the Synths and Guitars channel right now. That would be such a nice thing to do. Show your support and get all kinds of this really good information on synthesizers, sound design, FM synthesis, and other musical goodies right into your YouTube. So with having said that, let's continue on. Once you get down into the synth voice libraries, you will find that these four here are free and they include the Ka Pro CS80. Those are all CS80 sounds. And you also have the Montage Expanded, which includes the DX7 library, which I extensively sampled in another video here, which is linked. You also get the Chicks Mark V library, an incredible library. Amazing, amazing sounds based on organs and electric pianos and synths. And finally, the Bersendorfer 
290 Imperial, an amazing, amazing piano sound. It it does say that it's $99, but as if you look closely, there is a code you put in, Bose 17 at the moment, that's what the code is, and you type that in and you get it for nothing. You have to go through and add it to your cart. It looks like you're buying it, but uh, you don't have to enter any information. I think you have to enter your mailing address that is something that they will take, but no credit card has to be entered and it's free, so take advantage. Next, I'm going to show you how to install the new library onto your Modi X. You unzip the file that you've downloaded to your computer, you drag it onto a USB, but first, we're going to talk about how to format a USB because that information is very hard to find and it, you'd have to dig within the manual. It is on page 200 of the reference manual if you would like to uh, know and see it for yourself. But if you want to format a USB, hit device and it'll show you the, device, the USB that you have installed. Hit job, push that, and it'll come up with a tab on the left that says format. So just a little bonus tip on formatting your USB. I'm not going to do it now because that will erase all the information. I have all my libraries on there. But again, it's this little job button here. So let's go back. So here, you were looking at, you say you want to just install this, this USB. You click Devices, then Job, then push the USB that's named that it recognizes, of course, because that's why it's there. Once you press that, format will come up on the left. And you just press that and it will format that USB for you. Okay, so we have our USB. We install this in the back. Back behind the instrument on the right-hand side is the USB slot where you put your USB stick. Install that USB stick right in the back and you will see that it'll come up right in here that it's connecting to it. You're going to hit utility and you will see that right here montage expanded X7L. Now if you're when you hit utility and you go into this it, it's under content so if you happen to be under any of these other settings you go under contents and that'll give you the contents. You'll see the devices here. You just pick the USB stick that's installed. And as you can see on this stick, I also have the Bosendorfer and Chicksmark 5. I'm going to install the Montage Expanded dot X7L as I explained. We'll just press that and you'll see it'll start to load. Keep the power on, it says. It'll take a few minutes depending on your how big the file is. Okay, so as you can see, once it loaded up, it went right to that bank. And let's see what we have here. So on this one library, we had cool webinars, MC1, cool webinars, MC2, cool webinars, MC3, Cool Webinars MC4, Fat Analog, Ecstasin, Live Instruments. Sample Memory Full. So this is, is one of the issues you might run into. If you can't put all four of the free ones on this machine. There's only one gigabyte worth of space. So you'll get this error, sample memory full. Okay, close that. In order to put this library in, say you, you had to have this library for a gig or to check it out, you now have to get rid of something since we only have one gigabyte. So as you can see, I have all the four libraries on this USB stick. So just keep them on there and have them ready to go because you're gonna have to get rid of one to put another one in. So to do that, we're going to use data utility. 
and you'll come up with this page. Go into library and you will see the ones that you have installed. And as you can see, I got Chicksmark 5 and I got the K-Pro CS80. For now, let's get rid of the K-Pro CS80 so as to make room for the Montage Expanded. And as you saw what I did, once you go into Data Utility, you'll see the libraries you have installed. And when you click on one, over to the left here, you see there is a Delete tab that has opened up. So let's hit that. It'll tell you, would you like to delete this? This is to confirm, and you hit delete, and you wait a little while while it gets rid of that library. You can always put the library back in using the installation procedure, which I outlined in this video. So once it's done deleting, now we have what's left over. Now you can go back to load, and you can load the library that you want to put in there.